everyone, this is Will Whitfield from W3 Productions. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for watching my last video on importing DAS characters into Blender 3D. Um, with that being said, I found a tool that uh, makes a lot of that easier. Um, it's from Thomas Larson. You may recognize him from his work on the Make Human Project. And this one will add a plugin to Blender and it's something you can do in Daz as well and it will bring your character right in and it works seems to work from Genesis 1, 2, or 3 and Genesis 8. So there's some pros and cons and some things I'm still trying to understand myself but uh, I wanted to uh, show it to everyone else that might not know about it. So you can get it. Here and I'll give the uh, put the URL and the link in the description. Uh, Dipiomorphic, uh, the latest version seems to be 1.3, and you'll just go to the repository and download a zip file. And this site um, gives you pretty good instructions on how to do it, um, all the setup and all the options that are available. So I won't go step by step, just kind of high level. Um, once you get the um, zip file, you just, as with most add-ons in Blender, you will go to your user preferences and import add-on from file. And then that will leave you with this um, DAS runtime tab on your toolbar. The second part is within DAS. I'm using DAS 4.10 and you would go to your window um, option here go to workspace and do customize you would then under custom right click do new custom action and you would name it um, basic um, data it will tell you what to name it here in the uh, instructions but you would search for the dash script file that's within the zip file that you're given and from there, you would get a custom um, action that's called export basic data. And then you, under menus, you would uh, add it to your main menu under the file. And you would drag this over here near your import export. So that would leave you with, when you go to file, uh, another option called export basic data. And that's exporting data about your scene or your character as a JSON file to accompany the DUF file that you're going to import into Blender 3D. So I'm going to do that real briefly. Um, here I have a character based on Genesis 2 uh, male. Uh, like I said before, I believe it works with Genesis 3 and Genesis 8. Um, but I just haven't tried it out a whole lot. Um, so you would just save your file, you don't have to export, um, save it to a directory, I have it saved to my characters directory, and the name is Will. And then, after you save it, you would also click on export basic data. In the same directory, it has to be the same directory that you saved your dev file, you want to name the JSON file the exact same name. So both of them are going to be called Will, in my case. Hit save. In a few moments, uh, it will tell you that it's saved. There we go. Hit OK. And now we go to Blender. I'm going to delete the default cube, by cube, and actually by lamp. Let's add a, don't really need it, I'm going to add a surface plane. And for floor, I'm going to scale it by, I don't know, about 15. Just because. Um, now we go to, I'm going to go back to the tools, and for lighting, I'm going to add a dynamic sky using the dynamic sky add-in from Blender, 2.79 or 7.8, I can't remember when it came in exactly. Go to the world tab, uh, select the dynamic sky that we just created. And momentarily, we get all our options for the sky. We're going to leave the default. Also, going to bring up the properties key within and click on click lock camera to view. 
close the uh, oops, wrong button. Close the properties. And now we're going going to go to the DAS runtime tab. Import DAS files. The first thing we need to do. Go to our where we save file, so characters directory. We can select either the DUF file or the, the picture file that comes with it, and it'll import either way. Just going to do the picture just to show that it works. Because looking for all these formats, or any of these formats. We have some options here in the importer. Uh, the scaling, I'm going to leave that default for it right now. Uh, the mesh fitting, I'm going to use the JSON file that's it's going to pick up. Uh, we can use the default materials that it will create, or we can uh, check use the principal shader that's available in Blender 2.79. That's pretty cool. And these options are for what you want the different materials to look like in the viewport, viewport only. So I'm going to leave the default. Skin's going to look this. Uh, tan color and the, some clothes will turn out burgundy or maroon and some will look different colors but uh, that's fine. So we're going to hit import DAS file. Wait a few moments. And the benefit of this really is the simplicity of it once you have it all set up and um, and if you watch my video on importing using Filmbox, you had to do a lot to set up the um, transparency and the alpha, especially for things like the eyes and the hair. Here is all done for you. So we zoom in a little bit and we have our character and we see different color clothes or different colors in the viewport. It's again, is that tan color that I mentioned before. Let me use my camera to zoom in here. And I use Control B to box select, just to select the camera only for. Um, we do a preview to only render the camera area. So I'm gonna hit Shift Z, and it's gonna give you a preview of what we have just from uh, the few steps that we've taken so far. Actually, I'm going to hit control. Oh, never mind. Using my CP right now is why it's taking as long as it is. So, let me go to my render tab and hit GPU. Do that one more time. Got a lot more flexibility here. Uh, we got. No, pretty decent results just from what we've done so far. And I mean, our, our pose came in and everything. Uh, let's see. I'm going to move this up a little bit and go turn the timeline into a node editor. Uh, select the skin, and here we can see what the materials look like. Here's our principal shader and all of our textures as inputs and most of our materials are going to look similar the clothing and so forth I believe it still has most of the different parts of the body broken up as different materials but they all look pretty similar and we have different options um, what we can do with our character corrections mostly do the rig and what I will say is that the importer basically gives a rig to each part that you bring in so each piece of clothing has its own armature that acts independently of everything else so I'm click, clicking on let's say let's go to the shirt Get out of pose mode. Hit G. You know, the shirt runs away from everything else, not parented to the body or the body's armature. So you could actually merge uh, different uh, these different rigs together so they would be all controlled by one if you wanted to. 
materials. A lot of this has to do with the viewport. Some of it has to do with sub um, surface scattering and bump map strength. Morse, uh, but you can import different Morse to your character. Uh, also, face drivers, which is pretty cool. So, if you want to edit that in Blender, you could instead of doing it all in Daz. Um, finishing up, uh, you could convert. Oops, got notifications on. Uh, you could convert to the Make Human rig, MH. It makes it rig or rigify your character, so that's pretty cool. You got some more advanced versions, like you make a little version of your character. Um, different things here. You can convert from your current rig to another Genesis rig. Um, don't see a use case for, my, for myself, but you might have a use case for that. Um, find a rest pose, copying poses, messing with IK and all that. More morph settings. Uh, you can use this to add hair and modify the hair afterwards. My character's bald today, so I have to worry about that. Um, you can save different settings for this uh, add in. Um, I think this has a little more about textures and info about your character and posing. You can import your poses to your character. I'm trying to figure out uh, how this import action works. I think you can do different poses um, in one timeline. I'm kind of curious how you do um, like an actual motion capture file. Could you import that? Um, I left a board see uh, um, how that's possible because that's the only drawback I see here moving from DAS to Blender. Uh, if even you added a full motion capture to your character in DAS, it doesn't automatically come over using the DAS import. So maybe there's a way you can do it and I just missed it or there's something that's not available at this time. But this is a pretty cool setup as it is. So I thank Thomas Larson for uh, doing this. And hopefully a lot of find this helpful. And I um, just want to check for everybody else and maybe they'll have um, you know happier happier blends. I'll see if I can uh, do a quick render here. Out on this page. Uh, the only thing about using DAS characters is that you might, if you've done it before yourself, you know it takes up a lot of, of um, memory. So on my 4 gig, uh, I think I'm using a GTX 960. I only have 4 gigs of video memory in. So this is already using up a you know, over a gig just for one character in the scene. One time I tried to do two or three characters and I ran out of memory. I had to use my CPU, which is a lot slower. But we're getting pretty uh, good results using defaults um, on the render tab. Um, this is using my light paths, pretty, pretty um, generic settings. Um, I, use, I am using the denoising. Sampling um, using the basic setup 128 samples on your final render. There you have it. I'm in about a, about a minute and a half, we have a pretty decent render. Uh, so, again, hope you find this helpful and uh, give a thumbs up uh, or subscription if you haven't already and that little bell button for notifications, and I'll talk to you later. God bless.